everybody. So I am back today just with really my first work in progress on my British regular infantry um, for muskets and tomahawks. These are the models that I purchased um, that from Warlord Games. And um, I have essentially assembled them and I've also um, put some plaster down on the bases to sort of uh, level out the, ba the metal base that the feet are standing on. And I've done that with all of the, the models in Muskets and Tomahawks. It's sort of not something I've done as much in the past um, with my other games. I've usually used just a bit of green stuff just to kind of, um, I guess, grade down from the metal base on, on the plastic base with my Warlord stuff. Um, I didn't really do much at all. Like with 40k in the, in the past, I would just cover up the slot. Um, with the green stuff, but I've actually found that um, besides leveling it out with these, it's actually been quite good at um, making like a, a simulated ground effect. By the time I added um, sand, I've talked about this before, but by the time I've added, I had, I had sand and uh, washes, um, some stones and rock, it really does look like they're trudging through mud. Um, that plaster look, I really quite like it. Um, so I've done that. And I've used some uh, first coat of just black primer with the airbrush on there. Um, so this will, uh, like me, likely these guys will take me a little bit to do. There's going to be a fair amount of, um, I am going to try to do some, some trim on all the coats. Um, and so, um, I mean, obviously in the uniforms there's facings and various aspects that have to be painted. Um, and so I expect that this is going to be probably take me about as long as the um, the French uh, Marines did um, on the French side. And that was a little bit longer than what it normally takes me for models. Um, in addition, um, I just want to talk a little bit about these models. Um, unlike the uh, the Marines, there the, there is a bit more uniformity with these soldiers than the Marines. The Marines were, the French Marines were definitely, um, had a lot more variety in them. But you know, having said that, um, I actually think that there's a lot of variety in these uh, despite that. Now, I know from company to company you're going to see differences. I, I noticed that, let's say, Perry in particular has quite a bit of variety and I like that um, among them, whereas there's other ones where all of them are exactly the same. To my knowledge, um, the only ones that are exactly the same um, well, for the most part, the ones that are exactly the same are the four you get that are in the shooting mode. Um, they look to be the same exact model in four of them. Um, at first glance, you would think that all of the marching guys are actually the same. Um, I think that there are four or five different varieties of a very similar looking model. Um, you have this guy here, and he's got his hand um, down at his side. Let's see. Hopefully that goes in focus there. He's got his hand down at his side, um, and I've got uh, you've got this guy here, who um, has his head slightly turned and his hand lifted upwards while he's marching. Um, you have this guy here, who actually um, has his head forward and his hand on his gun, and then you have this guy here, which. He's head is his head forward, but his hand is actually out a bit, trailing behind slightly. And so, um, I actually didn't notice that. I just assumed they were all the same when I had purchased them. Um, I think I was talking, chatting with Robert Chisholm in a comment at one point, because he was looking at getting some, and he had made the comment about um, this particular one looking quite a bit alike. And, and I would agree that compared to my mar the Marines that we were discussing prior to that, that that's true. Um, but there is a bit of variety that I didn't quite notice, and um, you know, so at a distance, you know, they, they are, there are going to be some little differences, um, which will be good. You also get the command unit um, with this box set, which gives you um, the uh, the guys. I don't know if they call them halberds, but they're pole arms um, that they're they're wielding. Those are the sergeants, I believe. The I believe they would be NCOs. Um, and I could be corrected on that, but I think it said that it comes with two NCOs, and I believe that was them. Um, there's a musician, you know, the drummer, um, the um, captain, um, and then, uh, or officer. And then you have two flag bearers, or standard bearers. Um, one of the things that I had as a question for everyone 
whether you there are some folks that I know follow the channel that, that know muskets and tomahawks and then there are some that um, perhaps play um, other black powder games such as black powder um, in reading the rules for musket and tomahawks it doesn't really say what you do with non-standard troops and or officers or supporting troops and so there are rules specifically around your officer for sure but when I was reading and it's been a little while because I've been painting mainly not reading the rules again I, I distinctly remember not seeing anything about a musician or standard bearers and things like that and you know I, when you make your list up for points it just mainly talks about your troops and, and then your officer and so in this game um, did, would anybody else agree with that? That you, like, how would you handle um, your your minis that actually are not um, the ones that are visibly armed? You know, with your musket. Um, do you just treat them as any other point costed troop? And if they happen to fire, then you just assume that they grabbed a rifle or you know whatever. Or do you not count them at all? Like how how do you how do you handle that? Even like your standard bearer. I mean, I see the guy's got a sword. One of them's got a sword right out. But how would you handle um, this guy? You know, um, would he be able to shoot his musket at one point? Uh, a musket at one point. Um, then also for those of you that play other games in this era, how do you handle it in your rule set? I'm just curious, out of curiosity. I would assume that. Um, you know, Musk and Tomahawks looks like a really fun sort of skirmish game, and I get the impression that other than really setting up a great atmosphere of like rolling for the weather and lots of random tables to make it interesting, it seems like a bit of a fast paced game. Like, you know, it's not meant to bog you down. Um, I'm assuming that some of the bigger games with larger tables of armies, lots more minis, Napoleonic era, um, that you're going to have very explicit rules around those minis, um, which I don't think are in musket and tomahawks. So interested in, in folks' thoughts on that. Um, next, I, I had to decide, you know, I was going to do a standard for for this guy, and the, the actual um, box set itself does come with some flags you can use, and has probably... It looks like five different sets um, that you can use. And really, I could kind of try to go the historic route and try to figure out, like, you know, who my Marines are the future French regular, other French regulars from France that I might have, like what units they're going to be, who did they face, and, make, you know, match them up with these guys. Well, I'm actually not going to do that. Um, you know, it's actually cool and everything, and I, I like getting into the background, but I'm not really going that far with this. And so really... My decision, I think, on how to paint these guys and which um, which flag to use is just going to be what is the color scheme I want to go with. And um, what I've learned is that what they call the parts of fabric that are like underneath the coat and that face outwards at times is called a facing. And I didn't know that before. And um, I, w I would like to do it similar to how they've done it on the box here. Again, uh, I guess I'm going on a tangent of just not wanting to be different <laughs> lately. <laughs> it's the same thing I did with my, my Prussians recently, but I want to have a yellow facing on a red coat. And so, from looking at a site on the web, it looked to me like um, the um, 44th, um, so that with the yellow flag here, I actually have a yellow facing. And so I believe that is the one that I'm going to go with um, when I get to that stage in painting. I guess the other question, and I'm going to I'm going to look to it on YouTube, but comments are welcome or any links that people can share. I've never used a flag like this on a standard. I, all of the standards I've painted in the past were just plastic and already affixed to the pole. I've never had to glue one of these on. I've heard people talk about it where they will use um, white glue, you know, um, like an Elmer, as we, we call it in North America very often, um, just sort of a watered-down white glue, bending the flag first, I believe, and then applying the white glue to make it sort of ripple. This one does have some shadows that makes it look like it's rippling, but I think I'm going to try to definitely make some waves in it. Um, but if anybody has some pointers on that, um, I'm going to research it myself, but I'd be interested as well in other folks um, that have either done it or, or not, because it's new for me, and 
I'd like to gain from others' experience on that. So, um, that's all I've really got today. Uh, I am excited to, to work on these guys. Um, I think that uh, these, this should be a really cool troop when I'm done. I guess the only other thing I'll mention is um, I, I struggled a bit because I've never really done red that often as a primarily co primary color scheme. Um, but I am going to... Um, I, I looked... There are a number of different ways people have have um, chosen to do British regular as I was kind of researching it a bit. Um, and just looking here for the color that I was going to use. Um, a lot of people talked about how badly red covers black, you know, as a, a primer. And so there's lots of advice on what to do about that. Um, I think what I'm going to do is similar to the Prussians that I just did. I'm going to start with a darker red, I think, and, and start with a burnt cadmium red and actually airbrush um, probably a third or so of the model where where the, the coat is. And I'm going to start with that and then I was thinking that I would just um, un lightly highlight with the airbrush with um, Mephiston red um, just to lighten it up. And then from there that would be like my sort of base to start with and then I would work the whites and everything else and work the details and then do some washes and then likely um, go in and touch up and do some highlighting with with the pure red and perhaps even with a little bit of orange and some a mixture of red orange um, in some spots um, that I'll have to figure out as I go along but I don't know if you if any of you are really adept at painting British regulars and have some suggestions uh, I'd be interested to hear the way you guys have done it um, and because uh, this will be a first for me so, okay, well, hope everybody's having a good week, and take care.